This is how many Chinese students start their day at school. If one grows up in such an environment, it's easy to understand why Chinese people have an unusual love for their country or for the party. China's patriotic and war wolf education is long term with no interruptions. The Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, controls every aspect of society, including the economy, culture, and media. Education from kindergarten to university is the CCP's top priority. The CCP has gone through eight major revisions of the primary and secondary curriculum since it took power in 1949. The eighth curriculum reform began piloting in September 2001 and was fully implemented in 2005. It revised the content of 18 subjects in primary and secondary schools. A paper assessing the impact of China's eighth curriculum reform on students' ideology was published in 2017 by five economists, including David Cantoni, an economic historian at the University of Munich. They collected the values of 2,000 Peking University students through a web-based survey. Through various statistical analyses, it was found that the CCP's new curriculum had a significant effect on changing students' political ideology. First, compared to students who use the old version curriculum, students who use the new curriculum have greater trust in government officials. They are more likely to believe that the government cares about the welfare of the people, and official corruption is less of a problem. Second, they think the Chinese Communist government is democratic and more skeptical of Western democratic systems. Third, they are more skeptical of unrestricted free markets. In addition, the new high school curriculum appears to promote democracy on the surface and encourage people to participate in local elections. But it cleverly twisted the concept of democracy by making a distinction between orderly political participation in China and disorderly political participation in the West. It emphasizes that democracy with Chinese characteristics is superior to unrestrained democracy in the West. In other words, Chinese textbooks have changed and replaced the concepts of democracy, rule of law, and civil liberties with the CCP version, while controlling how they are defined and interpreted. Students end up absorbing these warped ideologies without knowing and even developing immunity or doubts and skepticism towards the universal values. It's not surprising then that when the Chinese vice foreign minister expressed his praise for democracy in China, many Chinese find it quite reasonable. For 100 years. China has never stopped its efforts to pursue and advance democracy. After the founding of the People's Republic, China's democracy has stepped into a new stage and made steady and historic progress. Many of my colleagues and friends who hope to see a sequel to the Age of Awakening, I would ask them: Don't you think? The prosperous, democratic China today is the best sequel. The CCP has deliberately blurred the distinction between the Communist Party and China, brainwashing Chinese people to take all criticism of the Communist Party as a direct assault on China and as displayed contempt for the Chinese people. The Communist Party has repeatedly instilled in the public the notion that children shouldn't dislike their mothers for lack of good looks, and that family scandals shouldn't be exposed to outsiders. While using deliberate education to foster hypersensitive patriotism, the Communist Party also works hard to sow and accentuate the conflict between the so-called patriots and the party's critics. This is a case in a Chinese restaurant. Some people were chatting around the table when someone expressed a negative view about their countrymen. A man at the next table felt offended and demanded an apology. At present, Chinese diplomats are known around the world for their war wolf image. 
the Chinese public, including young children, is being led towards this style. The mindset of war wolves originates from the Communist Party's theory of class struggle. Historically, anyone whose ideology differs from the CCP's party line has been the target of punishment. The CCP's greatest fear is to have history repeat itself as the eve of the collapse of the Soviet Union when soldiers were afraid to shoot at the people. In order to avoid this scenario and rid people of their guilt for fighting other people, the war wolf mindset needs to be implanted from childhood. People who grow up in such a dubious environment are bound to have values that are different from the moral codes of normal human beings. However, reality is also constantly shocking the young people who grow up under the brainwashing education. Here is a scene from a shopping mall in China in 2021. A young woman reacted to the government's hint by holding a sign to boycott H&M because H&M had issued an announcement that it refused to use cotton from Xinjiang. After the Chinese police failed to get the woman to stop, they simply took her away. An online comment by the public says, Smart people should know that if the CCP really wants to boycott the US and Europe, it can simply ask the children of senior CCP officials to give up their green cards and passports and withdraw their money from European and American banks. The so-called boycott of products by common people is just a well-directed drama to teach leaks to love scythes. A little pink from Beijing, or a CCP admirer, went to the local police station to report the so-called Taiwan separatist, but was fined nearly 500 RMB for illegally climbing over the firewall. Today, I'm going to do something big. I'm going to report Taiwan separatists. I've typed up a report letter and have all the evidence ready. If things go smooth, this Taiwan separatist won't be able to enter China anymore. He will be arrested once he enters China. If he is still acting rampantly, he will probably be arrested by our officials across provinces. What are you doing here? Report. Report what? Report the Taiwan separatists. Are you videotaping? Yes. No video recording allowed. Okay, I won't record. In the past few years, China has undergone waves of disasters which have touched everyone. The experience could be heavy and sad. Like it or not, young patriots, known as Little Pink, also experienced them. The recent COVID-19 outbreak in the Chinese city of Xi'an has left many residents without food and water due to the city-wide lockdown. On January 8, 2022, a Xi'an netizen complained on Weibo that the gates of her neighborhood have been locked from the outside and the fire escapes locked as well because of confirmed cases. Her cry for help attracted a lot of attention. Many have shared her Weibo post. However, netizens soon noticed her previous, supposedly righteous, comments. For example, in October 2020, when a large number of French were frantically fleeing Paris before the city was locked down, she posted, If Xi'an is locked down, I won't go anywhere. I'll just wait and die in peace. After a pregnant woman had a miscarriage in Xi'an during the city lockdown because the hospital refused to admit her, she posted on Weibo on January 6th, It doesn't matter where she has her miscarriage, as long as it's not in our hospital. From time to time, one can see former Patriot Chinese, or Pinks, describing their awakening process on overseas platforms. They call themselves rebels against the CCP. One person wrote, I was a big Pink last year, but this year I'm a big rebel. 
He described how in 2021, the Beijing government suddenly started to block gaming on a massive scale. This action prompted him to start thinking, and the more he thought about it, the more inconceivable it seemed. He then started to use VPN software to bypass China's firewall. He confessed, I spent a lot of time exploring different YouTube channels, pondering painfully, only to realize that it was me who had little common sense or discernment. Gradually, I began to understand the protests in Hong Kong and the evil of the Communist Party. But that was precisely what made me feel more painful. It was difficult to accept what was happening. I used to wonder if the truth was making me suffer and if I should stop trying to understand the so-called truth. Eventually, his thinking became clearer and he concluded, I began to understand that to get rid of the brainwashing of the Communist Party's long-term education, it actually takes time to cleanse it bit by bit and reconstruct the ability to think normally. I began to accept my current state and started to step out of the confusion gradually. The current CCP leader, Xi Jinping, is known as the chief accelerator, which means he is the only one who accelerates the CCP's exit from the historical stage. Some former Little Pinks have pinned their hopes for the future on Xi, with some saying, Without the chief accelerator, the rebels won't be able to make much of a splash if they try their best. I don't know how terrible the consequences will be if it keeps accelerating to the extreme. I can only quietly watch the ending of this series that has been played for more than 70 years, and how future generations will tell this absurd history. I hope I can live to see the day when the sun rises. Although the CCP's brainwashing education is ever pervasive, the nature of human beings is still there. In the rapidly changing year of 2022, this awakening tide should grow bigger and stronger.